To celebrate the launch of my PL400 Udemy course, we'll have a look at Microsoft's PL400 exam and the requirements of it. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. The PL400 exam is the fourth exam in Microsoft's Power Platform series. So it starts off with the PL900, which is all about the fundamentals. In other words, the high level, what can the Power Platform do? In the 100, you'll be making the apps, so you'll have hands-on experience with Canvas apps, model-driven apps, Power Automate flows, and more. This is further developed in the PL200 Functional Consultant. The PL400 takes a slightly different stance. It looks at the Power Platform and says, OK, how can you extend it to suit your needs? So we've got the Power Platform, but suppose you don't just want that as is. You want to extend it by adding additional functionality. So you can see candidates for this exam design, develop, test, secure, and troubleshoot solutions. They must have a strong applied knowledge of Microsoft Power Platform services. And while they list a host of things that you could need, really this concentrates on JavaScript or its variant TypeScript and C Sharp. Yes, some of the others would be useful, but not needed as much. So let's have a look at the categories that you'll be tested on. So creating a technical design, configuring Microsoft Dataverse, so that's a database in the cloud, create and configure Power Apps and business process automation, extend the user experience, extend the platform and develop integrations. Now, three of these are extensively covered in the PL100 and PL200 exams. So if you have a look at the PL100, for instance, you'll see that we have got create business solutions, 60 to 65%. And when we drill down into that, you'll see that it is all about creating Canvas apps, model-driven apps, configuring the Microsoft Dataverse, and creating flaws from Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents chatbots. Now, the complexity of what you have to do in the PL100 exam, as amplified in the PL200 exam, is the complexity that is needed for the PL400 exam. However, notice, create and configure Power Apps 5 to 10%. So this is more this is information you need to know, but it's not the primary focus of this exam. Similarly with the configure business process automation. So let's just have a look at the requirements of the exam. So we're going to start off with creating a technical design. So validate requirements and design a technical architecture. So we've got things like, do I use logic apps or power automate flaws? Do I use serverless computing in Azure or plugins or Power Automate. The design solution components, this is largely done elsewhere in the other sections. So really there isn't that much additional that's needed here. Similarly, describe Microsoft Power Platform extensibility points is also done elsewhere. Configure Microsoft Dataverse, a large part of this again is done in the PL100 and PL200 exams. It says implement application lifecycle management which is more new. Now, some of it relating to creations is tested in the PL200 exam, but implement source control, describe how to use package deployer, and the concepts are more new to the PL400. Looking at creating and configuring Power Apps, most of this has been tested in the previous exams. What's more new is the testing an app by using Test Studio, and managing and troubleshooting apps. Similarly, most of the configure business process automation has also been done in the PL100. What's new is implementing error handling and using code with the business process flaws. So the vast majority of the programming is done in the last three sections. So extend the user experience. We start out by applying business logic through client scripting. So what this means is we've got event handlers in the model driven app. So it could be on load, on save of the entire app, or it could be when a value changes. Then you can run JavaScript code that validates the change. 
or maybe add related records in another table. So maybe you're adding the details of a client in the contact table and you want a contact client task to be created in the task table. Creating a Power Apps component framework. So this is when the existing frameworks of your model-driven apps are not sufficient and you want to add a combination of text boxes, labels, buttons, and maybe more React components as well. So as you will see from the six bullet points, there's quite a lot of detail in the PCF component initialization and creation process. And then there's creating a command button. So I have a button in your model-driven app at the top that you can click and something happens. Extending the platform, creating a plugin. So maybe when something happens in the dataverse, a raw is created, updated, deleted. Well, you can create some code in C Sharp, for example, that is attached to a dataverse message. So it listens for the creation of a new raw or record and goes, okay, now that's done, I need to run some code. Creating custom connectors. So this is how you can connect to non-standard connectors, for example, Azure Functions, which are created in the process workloads section. You will need some sort of error handling. So what happens, for instance, if a particular custom connector can't be contacted because it's overloaded? So can you optimize for performance, concurrency, and more? And then we've got develop integrations. So we're looking at some things which are in the previous section, like publish an event by using the plugin registration tool. So this is how the plugins can be run based on Dataverse messages and also register service endpoints in Azure and elsewhere. So maybe you've got an Azure service bus queue and you want a new item to appear whenever a raw or record is created in the Dataverse. And then we've got data synchronization. So you've got an app, you open it, it has to load data from the Dataverse say there's 2,000, 20,000 records, would it have to keep repeatedly loading that data or can it just load all of those items which have changed? And is there a way to look for the data more easily? So this is the basis of the PL400. It's all about programming. It's all about using C Sharp and JavaScript to extend the user experience, extend the platform and develop integrations. But there is some knowledge that you need to know beforehand, which is better covered in the PL100 and PL200 exams. Now, this is a Microsoft certification. So if you take this PL400 exam and pass, then you will get the Microsoft Certified Power Platform Developer Associate Certification. And that would look good on your CV or resume. Now, the problem with getting this is that there doesn't seem to be much up-to-date information on the web regarding the PL400. So this is why I've created a new course on the PL400. So this is for people who have already covered the PL100 or PL200 exams. So I will assume that you know how to create Canvas and model-driven apps, create flows and manage solutions. I won't assume that you know JavaScript, TypeScript or C Sharp because I will be using simple examples and I'll be explaining them as I go along. So in this 11 hour course, we will be looking at applying business logic using client scripting, command button functions, Power Apps component framework components, creating our plugin, optimizing it, processing workloads, creating custom connectors and authentication, using platform APIs and consuming Dataverse events, creating a technical design, and other items which have not previously been covered in the PL100 and PL200 exams. There's also plenty of quizzes and a couple of practice tests, so you can be sure that you are learning. So this course builds on the knowledge that you will have previously got from the PL900 exam, which is all about what is available, the PL100 exam, which is all about making your apps, and the PL200 exam, which extends the knowledge that you have gained in the PL100 exam. So you will see that 
my PL100 course is 16 hours long. So this is part of the reason why my PL400 course assumes that you know all of the information from the PL100 and PL200 course to bring it down to just 11 hours and concentrate on the developer part of the requirements. If you're interested in my new PL400 course or any of my courses, then please have a look at the description to this video. And why not come to my website, idodata.com. Well, thank you very much for watching this. If you liked it, then please click the like. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.